Are you serious? Like, Sarah, you caused his friends to die. Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Now, continuing on with these little response videos here, I saw this article come up and I thought, well, with the current theme that I'm running here on the channel, I thought I had to respond to it. It's from the Daily Mail and it says, uh, Leap Hog, clever pig escapes slaughter by leapfrogging out of a trailer heading to the abattoir on the backs of two bigger porkers before owners kept him as a pet. The desperate animal was one of the three being transported by Sarah Allen from her small holding to a slaughterhouse 11 miles away. But Sarah 29 was dumbstruck when after arriving to drop off the livestock, she realized there were only two in her trailer. She started a large scale search team involving friends and neighbors back home in Langtree, Devon to locate the porker on the run. Thankfully, a local farmer then posted on Facebook to report a curious pig wandering one of his fields. It says, after claiming the incident showed the animal was destined to avoid the abattoir, Sarah, her husband, Stuart, two children, Archie, six, and uh, Phoebe, who is three, well, really young kids, have named him Milton and are keeping him as a family pet. Very interesting, isn't it? Um, so they put a large-scale search team out for this pig. Um, they've now called Milton, who they were going to send to be executed in a slaughterhouse. Now, these other two pigs, were, well, she just went through and slaughtered them. So they'll eat the other two pigs or sell their body parts. But this one, Milton, did a little trick for these people. And they think, oh, wow, Milton's special. We better not kill Milton. But the other two, they're not special, so we'll just butcher them to death. What you see here, what I, well, I, what I see here, is like when an animal does something that human life thinks is favorable or like they desperately plead for their lives, sometimes not all, at all times, escape a slaughterhouse truck. Humans would be like, well, this pig here is special. We're not going to kill this pig. This, this pig here is like babe. La, la, la. Or like a very special pig. The rest of them, they are just porkers who we can throw in gas chambers, main way they are killed in the UK and Australia. Predominant method around the world, disgusting gas chambers. Or electrically clamped and stabbed to death. It just... <sighs> I just, I just don't understand why, like, something like this would happen, and they wouldn't just be like, well, animals want to live, we should stop using them for their bodies, killing them, farming them to butcher them, and maybe we should just extend this compassion for Milton the pig consistently. I just don't know how people don't see that. Here's the family playing with the pig, Milton, little boy here, playing with Milton. Yeah, Milton escaped, but what about the others? What about the others? I'm actually glad they didn't kill Milton, but at the same time, I like don't want them to kill other animals either, and I want them to stop funding the industries that butcher and kill animals en masse as well. So let's continue. Look at Milton. Look at that face. Look at him. How could you send him to a slaughterhouse? Probably really young as well. Sarah and her husband Stuart believe the pig was too small to climb over the back of the trailer himself. They think in desperation he must have used his friends to propel him outside of the trailer on the way to the ab abattoir. Why would he be so desperate to escape a truck? I thought, like, animals are so dumb, they don't know what's going on, they don't, they have no awareness of anything bad about to happen to them, they just waltz on into the slaughterhouse and end up packaged in a supermarket shelf. There's nothing horrible that happens along the way, they don't struggle in fear in a gas chamber, they don't see blood and witness their friends being slaughtered beforehand and just have a horrible, brutal death. But for some reason, Milton sensed something was up, maybe. Didn't like to be in the back of a truck. I know pigs, they get very anxious animals and thought, I'm not going to stand in this truck for any longer. I'm going to try to escape. And was desperate enough to jump out of a moving vehicle, which is crazy. Crazy desperation, um, which shows the animals are willing to harm themselves to try to escape what they fear might be coming. Now, I don't know if Milton knew Milton was going to a slaughterhouse. Um, sometimes when there's larger packs of animals, they might see a few animals go and never come back. And maybe they might think, well, where did they go? <laughs> but maybe Milton just didn't like being in the back of the truck. Maybe Milton had a premonition. I don't really know. Let's keep going. 
Sarah says the porker has saved himself and is now destined to stay on the farm. She said it was clearly a mad day. On the way to the abattoir, we were saying how smoothly it had all gone. Wow, so they're probably feeling a little bit of anxiety taking these pigs to the, the abattoir. Because all they have to do is drive them there, drop them off, wipe their hands, and that's it. Like, most farmers don't witness their animals being killed. I know that for a fact. Some farmers do, but most farmers don't. Even farmers that have been farming for years and years and years don't follow their animals that they've cared for. Usually on these humane farms that they've cared for and they think, oh, we've done a really good job here, high humane welfare standards, but they don't follow them into the slaughterhouse to watch them, the fear in their eyes as they're breathing their last breath and having a knife stabbed into their neck. They don't do that, do they? So we got in to join the queue for the abattoir and my husband said, Sarah, there's only two. I said, don't be silly, there can't be two. I was in shock. Sarah has three pigs on her small holding each year with a view to share the meat out between her friends and family. Share the meat out. This is they calling in this animal a porker. Oh, we're just waiting in line at the abattoir. Like an abattoir is a murder factory where animals are butchered against their will. And they have this fancy French word called abattoir. So she does it every year to eat the bodies of these animals she cares for. How's the disconnect, you know? How is the disconnect? So it says the mother of two also keeps 16 chickens and three ducks, but insisted these are pets. So she keeps 16 chickens probably to use them for their eggs, I am assuming. The ducks, I don't know what they're going to do with them. Maybe let them live. Maybe they have selective compassion here. It seems like they do because just look at the Milton situation. Sarah was relieved when a farmer from the village of Milton, Damaril, posted on a Facebook community page reporting the missing pig. It's the joy of social media, she added. Well, such a joy that they found Milton, seeing as they were going to eat his dismembered body anyway. They were going to cut up this poor defenseless being and share out portions of his flesh to family members and just make this dead animal part of their body. But you know, they're so glad they found Milton. We were out for hours looking for him. He managed to come straight out of the trailer and onto a 60 mile an hour road. Wow. Very desperate. He's then gone straight in the field next to the road. We don't tend to name them, but a lot of people have said maybe we should name him Milton after where he was found. Well, I mean, you don't want to name your victims, do you, really? You just want to raise them, call them porkers, just say, look, they're meat. These are the, these are meat. We're, look, we've got this small holding, super humane, looking after these animals, living off the land, and uh, we don't want to give them a name because then we would feel even more guilty for sending them to get executed. So look at this beautiful picture with Sarah. Sarah, probably a nice person, just thinks she's, I don't know, doing what is natural or something like this. Uh, doing, following the farming tradition, animals have to die so we can eat them. Maybe Sarah doesn't know that she can be perfectly healthy on a plant-based diet and doesn't need to execute these animals to eat their flesh. So it says, Sarah had some sympathy with the pig after spending some time chasing him to, to bring him home. Wow, so you had a bit of sympathy for this one, Sarah, but you murder three every year, and I don't know how many other animals you were paying for to be killed in your lifestyle and diet. Um, it says, since And since they were already at the abattoir when she realized one was missing, the other two pigs were left to face the music, which Sarah says has left the third feeling down. Oh, but it hasn't left Sarah feeling down. It's left the third pig feeling down because the third pig's friends are gone, um, and you'll be eating their bodies. And uh, you'll probably be playing with this pig, Milton, straight after you eat, you know, maybe the, the bum of the other pigs, because a lot of bacon is ma made from the rear end of the pig. You're eating a bit of their, their fr Milton's friend in the morning for breakfast, and then go out and have a cute little photo with photo opportunity with Milton, hey? Is that how you do it? Absolutely absurd. And, you know, yes, I'm being condescending because Sarah and her family should not be raising animals to stab them in the throat. It's immoral. I care more about the animals here than I do about, you know, the feelings of Sarah here. I just wish that they were just more consistent and didn't, like, what human beings are. They're so, it's human supremacy, you see. They choose who lives and who dies. The animals who are in the world and aware of the world should have the right to live and should have the right not to be exploited and killed. But, you see, human beings override their rights with their, you know, supremacist mindset and just go, pig number one and two you can be executed, you will be called Milton, and you will live. Dog can live, 
chicken will be killed, cow will be exploited for dairy, baby will be killed, and we will make cheese from that milk, and then we will kill the cow for burgers. You know, it's like, oh, we like, this This pig did a little magic trick for us. Oh, we feel bad for this one. We'll, we'll, we'll let this one live. You know, it's just selective compassion and human supremacy. The other two pigs have gone to the abattoir, so he's a little bit sad about his friends. She said, well, they've gone to be viciously murdered against their will in a slaughterhouse. Um, and their stomach has been cut out on the floor, their tongues have been cut out, their eyes have been cut out, their face has been skinned, their body has been dismembered into pieces, and you'll be eating it. Uh, maybe you'd be making sausages out of the other pig's intestines. Um, it's a horrible place, a slaughterhouse. Stop calling it an abattoir to make yourself feel better. This is a euphemism. People say humane slaughter and abattoir and, you know, all of these words that sort of hide people from the reality of what's going on there. Like, go in there and face those pigs as they are desperately trying to escape whatever method they're being murdered with in there and just watch it and watch it and, and just ask yourself, if it's so humane, would you like to put yourself through it? Would you like to put a family member through that? Absolutely not. Completely needless uh, murder here. I sat up with him last night. He misses his friends. Are you serious? Like, Sarah, you caused his friends to die. You caused his friends to die, and you sat up with Milton last night because he was sad. You know none of this needs to happen. <laughs> like, none of this had to happen. You didn't even have to send his other... You know, you could have been like, oh, well, maybe maybe one has tried to escape. Maybe we will stop slaughtering pigs, and maybe we'll have a little animal sanctuary here, and we'll just be vegan. <laughs> you know, like, that's an option too. You didn't have to kill anyone. You didn't have to kill any of them. It's just... I just can't believe that Sarah's got enough of a kind heart to sit up with Milton because Milton was sad, but yet you destined the two other pigs, which you spent probably about six months with, to a slaughterhouse to be murdered. I mean, it's just crazy. It's crazy. So I sat up with him last night. He misses his friends, but he's safe and well. He's become quite a famous pig over the last 24 hours. I think this piggy is destined to stay with us. Ah, oh, so you decide, do you, Sarah? You decide because this pig has no rights and, you know, you decide whether he lives or dies. So, you know, you've had a change of heart and you decide Milton stays with you and he's now famous. So you can't really kill Milton now, can you? Because people be like, oh my God, you killed Milton. But, you know, you could have a change of heart again. And just in the dark, just send Milton down. You might get a bit hungry. Maybe you run out of pig flesh from the other two and send Milton, you know, quietly off to get slaughtered so you can eat his body as well. I mean, look... It just doesn't, nothing really surprises me anymore, you know what I mean? Like, to be honest, it's like, like you see people like so vehemently against the Yulin and then they sit down to steak, like they'll they'll chastise people in Yulin, China. Oh my God, I can't believe you ate a dog. You, you absolute brutal maniacs killing dogs. How dare you? I'm going to kill pigs and chickens and cows like normal people. Like, oh my God. So here, I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to watch this with you guys. I don't know if you've seen this. It's pretty well known now, especially in the vegan community. But a lot of you aren't vegan. A lot of you um, haven't seen this. But I want to show you what it looks like when a pig desperately escapes from a slaughterhouse truck. Oh, it's not, it's not a bit of 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 a bit Look at this. There you go. That pig was so desperate. They landed on the bitchman from a moving truck just to escape where they were going. How sad is that? Look at that. How brave. How brave of this animal. Liberated themselves. Liberated themselves from slaughter. Absolutely crazy. This pig probably ended up in a sanctuary too, I think. I'm not too sure. Let me know what the people in the background were saying, guys, if you speak whatever language that was. It sounded like German. I'm not too sure. But this is what it looks like. Animals desperately trying to save themselves for where they're going. They might be so afraid they don't actually know where they're going. It might be just terrifying in the truck. But when pigs arrive to a slaughterhouse and they can see the blood, uh, they can smell the scent of fear from the other animals. I think pigs release some type of... Um, something in their urine that alerts other pigs that some, some dangers ahead. And, uh, you know, so it's a terrifying place. Or just put yourself in the animal's position. Put yourself in the animal's position with a gun between your forehead about to die. 
you know, that's it. When you're dead, that's it. Or being prodded into a gas chamber and, you know, lowered down into a dungeon filled with gas that burns your eyes and makes you suffocate. Horrible, horrible way to go. So anyways, guys, um, yeah, I thought that article, like, Sarah and, and family, like, is this just, do you really care about this pig? Or did you, maybe you did have a, a bit of compassion in your heart for this one pig. But please, like, can't you see the hypocrisy in just saving one pig because they do a little trick for you, make you feel sad, and sending all these others to be slaughtered and eating their bodies afterwards? Like, the disconnect has to be a lot more if you're actually raising the animal, looking after them, seeing them every morning. The kids probably love the pigs. What do you, what do you tell the kids? <laughs> what happened to the pigs? Oh, they had to go to the abattoir and we're going to eat them, kids. It's like you're teaching the kids cannibalism. <laughs> like, like, do you think that that's really, like, a good message to send the kids? Like, hey, it's okay to kill if we want something tasty to eat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't you want to teach your kids, like, hey, when, when you have sentience and you experience reality subjectively, you deserve your rights. And it's not right to hurt the kitty cat or hurt the puppy dog or hurt Milton the pig. But right now, we want some bacon. Send them to the slaughterhouse. You know, it's such an inconsistent worldview to instill into children. And you wonder why people, you know, grow up confused and have cognitive dissonance. And when you tell them you're abusing these animals when you pay for them to go to the slaughterhouse, uh, people freak out and go, no, mum taught me that, you know, just love the dog and killing and eating the pigs, cows, chickens and fish is fine. But those people in Yulin, China, oh, they're evil for eating the dogs. And, oh, those people over here, they're e evil for e eating the horses, you know. And these people over here, uh, they're evil for shooting the elephant and shooting the rhinoceros for their horns. It's such a needless thing, taking an elephant tusk or the horn of a rhinoceros. But me having this bacon sandwich here is completely fine because uh, we love eating pigs and it's uh, not needless to me because we don't have anything else to eat other than animal flesh and animal products. Oh, wait a second. What about the, you know, tens of thousands of edible plant foods out there and all the the millions of vegans who are living perfectly healthy lives. And, uh, you know, uh, anyways, guys, I'm going to leave it there because I could talk about this all day. But let's hope Sarah and her family wake up. Milton, you, like you could easily start a sanctuary called Milton's Mission, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, just rescue animals and look after them and teach your kids, you know, kindness, compassion, justice and respect. You know what I mean? And help us create a vegan world instead of hindering it with this, you know, these small holdings who are murdering innocent beings, parts of your family. These pigs were part were a part of your family and you sent them to be murdered so you could eat them. Crazy world. See you all in the next video, guys. Peace.